Today we're going to be covering something incredibly insane and this is even more crazy than wearing a pair of sunglasses over another pair of sunglasses. Okay, I think that left a mark on my nose. Anyway, we're going to be talking about infix operators in Python and in general you can't really create your own infix operators and that's what I thought until now. I just discovered that infix operators are actually a thing in Python. You can actually create them with some of the ugliest syntax imaginable and I'm actually making this video thanks to the recommendation or the suggestion from Celestial Owl8865. They brought this to my attention so now I'm happy to share this with you guys because I actually experimented a bit and I think this syntax looks amazing. First, I want to demonstrate what it's going to look like because maybe you don't even care about this. But the way it's going to work is that you're going to be able to define your own operator. So you can use some sort of variable name. And this operator is going to be of type infix, which is user defined. I created it myself and I put it in a module called special. Anyway, here we're going to create an infix instance and that's going to take a lambda, which takes two arguments, A and B because of course something needs to come before the infix operator and something needs to come after it so we can perform that operation. For this one, we're just going to multiply A by B. So we created our own multiplication operator, so to speak. Now to actually use this, we're going to print the result of let's say 10 and we're going to use the pipeline and inside here, we're going to pass in M, which is our infix operator. Then we're going to pass in two. So we're multiplying 10 by two. And as soon as we run this, we're going to get 20 as an output because that's the behavior that we defined for our infix operator. And you can even get more creative than that. You can say, for example, instead of M, we're going to call this contains. And we're going to change this code up a bit. So instead of saying A times B, we're going to check that B is in A. Super simple. We created a membership test here. So now what we can do is get some sort of list or some sort of iterable that supports uh, membership checks such as a string and we can check that this string contains the letter i and if we run that we will get back true because i is inside the string as you can see it's located at the index of three if we put something that doesn't exist such as an uppercase x it's going to return false so once again, we defined our own infix operator with our own custom functionality. Now, very briefly, you probably already know this, but for those of you that don't, I'm just going to go over a bit of the theory of what an infix operator is. So an infix operator is practically the operator that comes between two variables. If you have a prefix operator, it's going to come before it. And if you have a postfix operator, it's going to come after it. Now that was probably the most rushed explanation I've ever given. If you're more curious about infix, prefix and postfix, search it on Google because now it's time we actually learn how to create these infix operators in Python. So I'm going to remove all of this and we're going to create everything inside this file. So right now we're just going to pass in pass for the main function and I'm going to remove the import because we don't need to really import anything to create an infix class. But what I will import is from typing, because you know how much I love typing, the self type, the callable type, and the any type. Then we can create a class called infix. And the very first thing we should do is create an initializer. And inside this initializer, we want to take a function, which will be of type callable, and this will return none, because it's just an initializer. Then we will assign the self dot function to the function that we pass in, or the other way around. So that takes care of the setup for our infix function because initially we pass in a lambda and then we need to use that lambda somehow with the pipelines. And to actually achieve this behavior, we're going to have to use a couple of dunder methods. The first one being the raw dunder method. And I wrote that backwards, but of course that takes self and we also want it to take other of type any. And that will return to us an infix instance. So here we'll type in self which you can use as of Python 3.11. Then we're going to return infix and inside here we need to add a lambda and here we need to pass in some sort of variable because the variable is going to be called with the function and calling this function will call both other and the variable. And I know it's already incredibly confusing and that's why I'm going to add this print statement which will help me explain it better as soon as we run the program. So here we're going to type in roar and I'm just going to pass in other. 
This will make sense as soon as we run the program. I used it myself to try to understand what this mess was because initially I was reading this from this website on code.activestate.com and they had this Python recipe for creating infix operators. But the catch is that this was written in Python 2. I mean, it's over 18 years old. So I did my best to translate it in modern Python, or at least I thought this was Python 2, because if you look at the print statements down here, they're missing parentheses, and that doesn't work in Python 3. But anyway, I took the example from this website, and I used it, and I revised it so it could be a bit easier to understand. But we also need to implement the or dunder method, and that's also going to return any because it can be any type. If we pass in an integer, it's going to return whatever we do with that integer. For the second one, we're still going to copy this print statement and do the exact same thing, except we're going to call this one or. Then we're going to return self with the function and the other. And that's the entire implementation for creating these infix operators. And you might notice that for the original recipe, they will have some extra methods such as RL shift and R shift and call. That just gives you some extra flexibility with some other symbols that you can use, such as these bitwise operators. If you want those, you're going to have to follow the recipe, but I'm showing you the most simple implementation which uses the pipelines. Anyway, with this being put into place, let's create our first infix operator. And this one's going to be called P because I want to create a print infix operator. And the way it will work is that we will create an instance of infix, which will take a lambda with the first variable and the second variable. And what we're going to do here is print A and B. Then what we can do immediately under is type in something such as hello, pipeline P, pipeline world. And to explain how this works, I'm just going to simply run main because it's going to give us some information. But now you can also see the dunder methods being called in a specific order. And the way it works is that first the raw dunder method gets called when we are comparing hello and p. This performs that operation and that returns to us self, which is the infix instance. So then we can compare p to world, which then calls the or dunder method. And whatever we decide to do there, it's going to perform that operation. So we actually split this into two different operations in theory. And these print statements were really the easiest way I could describe this because one happens before the other when we are performing this operation. Now you can insert whatever kind of code you want inside here as long as you have a function that takes two arguments. So if you want to multiply these two, you can easily type in something such as a times b. That will work just fine. And we can just type in mul. Then all we have to do is change this to multiply. Although this example is pretty bad, so I'm going to print 10 pipeline multiply pipeline, let's say five this time. And as soon as we run this, as you can see, it's going to first work with the first under method, then the second under method, and then it's going to perform that operation. But obviously you do not need these two print statements for this to work. You can just remove them like that. And the next time you run this script, you'll get 50 back. <sighs> Now you might be asking, is this useful at all in Python? And I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Just having to create this class for me was already kind of going out of the way to achieve nothing. I just thought it was super cool because I've never seen this kind of syntax in Python before. So I would absolutely love to hear what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. And if you know about any other crazy tricks and tips that you can use in Python, if you leave it in the comment section down below, I would love to explore it. I absolutely geek over these kind of things when it comes to Python. This one definitely was more like an Easter egg, but again, I would really like to hear what you think about it in the comment section down below. And yeah, that about wraps up everything I wanted to cover. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.